Hello, my name is Daniela and welcome to my April monthly wrap-up. In the month of April, I read nine books, five I read physically and four I listened to on audiobook. Three of the five that I read are manga and two are like, um, one is a graphic novel and one is a short story, like kids book so you could say it was kind of in a reading slump like a physical reading slump now i usually like read a lot like listen a lot on audiobook because i do go to work and um listening just makes more sense if i want to read more or like listen more stories get through more books basically but yeah let's get into each book this might be a little bit more hectic than usual because I don't have what I usually have, like a synopsis thing and um, like written out each book that I read. But hopefully it's gonna be better than the first wrap up that I did because that one was a hot ass mess. So the first book that I read in the month of April is this bad boy right here and it's Avatar uh, The Lost Adventures. I was wondering if it was Avatar Team Avatar Tales because I do have that one, I read that last month and I got this one and now I am ready to read the Avatar stories you have like all of them back here also I want to get the Kyoshi one which I don't know if that one is a book or if it is like a graphic novel like this one basically it's a bunch of short stories during the time that the gang was together and traveling and stuff it's it's fun short and sweet uh really enjoy it um and five out of five like what do you want me to say it's avatar themed like i already said like i will give a five out of five to anything avatar I love the Avatar universe. If I had to compare it with the Avatar team Avatar stories or whatever it's called, I think this one is better, but I think that one is better in a different way. That is more like a collaborative project, whereas this, I think only one person did all the art for it because it's very consistent with the Avatar art. So yeah, really enjoyed this one. And it's also like thicker, so you get more stories. Great. Great stuff. Next off, I finished The God Emperor of Dune by Frank Herbert. I listened to it on audiobook. Basically, it is about 3,000 years in the future. Paul Mondeep's son, Leto Atreides, is alive and is the God Emperor of Dune thanks to his like symbiosis with the worm and sand trout. Like, he's becoming a worm. That's why he's living so long. Arrakis is under his rule. And yeah, some people love it, some people don't. I really don't know what to say about this. You can see that I didn't like read a synopsis. I'm just telling you what I think is the synopsis. What can I say about this that I already said? This series for me is a solid three. Like, I personally I'm not like in love with it, but I can see why people love it. That's a three for me. And also like it is enjoyable. A three. Like it is enjoyable. I personally don't love it, but I can see why people love it. A three. Was it worse or better than the other stories? Man, it's really hard to say because I don't have any particular strong feelings. Like I don't hate it. I don't love it. It just meh to me. So can't really express an opinion, like a solid opinion on it, you know? Then I read I Am Invited to a Party, which uh, this is the third book in the series of Mo Williams, like the piggy and elephant book stories. And I gave this one a five out of five. This was delightful. This was just charming in a way that the first two weren't. It was just funny, silly, everything that I wanted. So yeah, five out of five. Then I listened to The Heretics of Dune by Frank Herbert, which is the second to last of the Chronicles of Dune book and I really actually enjoyed this one. I still gave it a three, like no strong feelings, but I really enjoyed this one because it was centered on the Bene Gesserit, which ever since the first book, like knowing that there is this society of women who lead a breeding program or basically like specifically try to 
greet certain people to get certain attributes i found that fascinating from the first i was like oh my god i need to read that i i was like oh my god this is what i wanted all along uh and it was it was good so three but i really did enjoy like the Benny Gesserit point of view. Again, I don't have really much to say because I don't have a solid opinion. I was just happy to get what I wanted, like a Benny Gesserit point of view on the Dune universe, and I got it, and it was fine. It's still sci-fi, and it's still basically like the same thing. Like, if you don't like one book, you're not gonna like the rest. If you love one book, you're gonna love all of them. I think that's just the general feel like you might like one more than the other but like i think i like this i think this was my favorite one i do think but it's still a three like i can't think it's conscious give it a four when i compare it to other books that i gave fours where i was like loving them so much and couldn't wait to finish them or just find out the rest of the story but just something was a little bit off that's for me a four a five is i completely enjoyed it immersed in it and didn't even realize that there was something wrong with it Maybe on a second read I would, but on the first read, no. Then we have the manga that I read for this month, and I'm gonna start reading these two. Look at them, they are beautiful. I don't, uh, I think I showed them in last month's like wrap up and like TBR, but th these covers, look at them, they are beautiful and they like glossy, beautiful. So I read the first and the second jojo's bizarre adventures manga volume copy whatever they are the deluxe edition and i want to get the rest although uh i think only the star just no the starter crusade but like a jonathan joestar no he's jonathan joestar what's the other guy's name johnny um the american joestar uh his manga are like in the deluxe edition but the stardust crusade joe star are in the deluxe edition yet so i'll probably wait for those and just buy a copy or two of the um american joe stars deluxe edition anyway if you don't know what i'm fucking talking about uh jojo's bizarre adventures is a manga and anime i would recommend the anime this i think is one anime that builds on the manga with sound effects and music and voice acting where usually you have something like oh the manga's better i think the manga and the anime are not equal but it's very hard to like have one above the other because they both have their qualities to them and honestly i'm just thinking about what do i want to tell you about the synopsis um <laughs> judges without adventures is hard to say the synopsis these i think are a little bit more simple but the later series i don't know what i'm gonna tell you about those but the first book the first volume of the manga let's start with this one is about Jonathan Joestar. His mother dies in a carriage crash. Vagrant saves the life of his father and him, like a drunken dude who wanted actually to steal his stuff, but the guy woke up and thought that he saved them. Uh, and when he dies, he sends his son, Dio Brando, to live with the Joestars as repayment. Um, and Dio is a sick motherfucker. Just wants the money of the Joe stars because he loved his whole life in poverty. So he's mean to Jojo, he kills his dog, and later when they grow up, he plans to kill his father. He doesn't succeed in the way that he wanted to kill his father. He wanted to poison him, but he ends up turning into a vampire, which I know is like left field. If you don't know what Jojo Bizarre Adventure is about, that's sort of like left field, like what? That's yeah, a 360. He turn, ends up turning into a vampire because of a stone mask and ends up almost killing Jojo. They, like basically they end up almost killing each other in the process. That's basically the first volume of Jojo's and I really enjoyed it. I gave it a 4 out of 5. Uh, the reason why I gave it a 4 was because... I don't know if it was because I watched the anime first. I usually have a problem with this when I watch something first and then I read something second or vice versa. I have a problem with it. If you haven't seen my Outlander video, you can obviously see that I have problems with this. I compare stuff very much. The manga is very true to the anime. They didn't change 
anything, I think. Just added on it. I already knew what there was, where this was going, so I think that hindered my enjoyment of it a little. Then we have the second volume, which we see a lot more action in. In this one, Dio didn't die, he's still alive, and Jojo tries to kill him, basically again. But this time, um, he has a master called uh, Zeppeli. Yeah, called Will Antonio Zeppeli. And Zeppeli, uh, his whole, he devoted his whole life to destroying the stone mask that turns people into vampires um, because he killed his father. And he uh, has this technique called Hamon, where it's basically thanks to breathing, you have the power of sunlight, which is the only thing that can kill the vampires. But now you can like learn this breathing technique that creates Hamon in your body and you can basically use it to fight the evil doers. So that's what happens in the second book. Again, a four stars for me. Um, it's a lot more action-y, which is nice. Uh, and the fight scenes in JoJo's Resort Adventures in general are very good, I think. I think they're great. Then I listened to the last book in the Dune Chronicle series written by Frank Herbert, and that is Dune Chapter House. In this one, the Benny Gesserit are in danger because there is a group of women called the Honored Matres that are trying to hunt them down and kill them. That's as much of a synopsis as I can give you. Why I say this is the last book in the Dune Chronicles series is because for me this, and I think for a lot of readers, this is the last book. I know there are more, but the rest of them are written by his son and as much as I felt neutral about this whole series, uh, I'm not gonna continue on with the books that his son read. Even with books that I love, I wouldn't read it if it wasn't from the same author. Maybe like, oh, it's in the same universe, but there's this other person that has his own story. Okay, yeah. But I feel that the books are very much just working off of what his Father road and I'm just not into that. I'm, I'm just, no, sorry. A solid three out of three, like the rest of the books. Really, really, I feel really neutral about this whole series. Like, if you enjoy, it, great. If you don't, fine. Like, uh, sorry. Yeah. So I don't really have much to say about it. And then we have the last volume of the JoJo's Bizarre Adventures from Jonathan. Jonathan Joestar. Oh, this one. This this. A collection I think it's called Phantom Blood now that I think about it. So the Phantom Blood collection, so these three, let me just pick them up, these three make out the Phantom Blood collection. Like look at them, they're, they're gorgeous. Oh. Anyway, in this third one, um, it's, it's the final standoff basically between Jonathan and Dio. That's all I'm gonna say without any spoilers. This one was the hardest to get through because... I don't know why. I think I was just in a physical reading slump this month. This took me the longest to finish. And I still gave it a 4 because I don't think it was it had had anything to do with the actual manga. I think it was just my headspace at the time. And the whole series is by Hirohiko Araki. I hope I'm saying the name right. And I think he does a great job with the like art style and the story writing. Um, and I really actually do enjoy the little short um, interview like snippet stories at the end of the manga that they have with him. I think it's really fun. And the last book that I listened to, and I do have actually a physical copy of this month, is Dragonfly in Amber by Diana Gableton. Now I know I got a lot of hate for my reaction to the Outlander series, but I am actually still watching and enjoying it. I stopped, uh, I'm a few episodes in, I'm not watching like consistently because I'm afraid I'm gonna get spoiled to future books. Taking it slow. Taking it slow because I like you a lot. Am I gonna get demonetized by that? I don't get paid for this. So I don't care. But yeah, um, this is the second book in the Outlander series by Diana Gableton. I didn't realize I actually looked up like what's the next book and how many actually are there? They didn't realize that there were so many in the series. But yeah, this is a thick boy. Like look at this. Look at and the writing is so well. Enjoyed it. I gave it a 4 out of 5 because I felt that some parts dragged. I didn't have such a problem with it as the, like I read other people have. 
they a lot of people didn't like the part in France where basically Claire and Jamie just lived their life. I love that part. I want to see the couple that I rooted for a whole book being happy together. I don't know about you, maybe you just want to see them suffer, but I want to see people being happy. I think that's um, a show of good writing, or at least I read somewhere that you have to show the person being happy so you know what they lost when they are in tough times and what they're trying to get back. Because if your character is always miserable, like, what are you trying to fight for? Because they're always miserable, you know? You, it's kind of hard to explain, but I think it's good writing. I think uh, I was most interested actually about the, like, the now, the future, because this the plot in this one is that Claire has returned to the present time, her time, and she has a daughter now that is coming of age. Uh, she is basically explaining to her who her father is and where she came from and like her ancestry and what happened to Claire. So you have about, I don't know how much actually, uh, you have about this much of the beginning that's in the future and about this much of the end that's like in the past. So this whole thing, uh, I mean in the future still. So this whole thing is the past basically, what happens to Claire when she's still, like after the first Outlander book, when she is still in the past with Jamie. Ma, yeah, but the, the Parisian part didn't really bother me that much. There were some parts that dragged, but I can't really think of them like off the top of my head, which parts the stab were. I just remember reading it and like, okay, okay come on and also some parts really felt like let me say this there was a dinner party without spoiling anything there was a dinner party where someone was accused of something being very vague and instead of just like explaining themselves or like explaining themselves beforehand they tried to keep it secret um why i don't know so yeah, that seemed a little bit convoluted to me. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, read the book. It's, it's good. I think it's good. Yeah, I know a lot of people have problems with it, but I, like, yeah, I had some problems, but they weren't the problems that I saw other people, people having. And I gave it a four out of five, but I didn't really say that. And that's the last book that I read in April. Um, I did actually read this in audiobook and not physically because it was just more simpler like that during work hours to get through it. I, I really love the audiobooks. The woman who reads it is great. Like, love her. Um, they say her name at the beginning, but I always forget. She is, she is mwah, amazing. That's it for my April wrap up. As for my May TBR, um, I don't know what kind of books I actually want to show you because it's gonna be a secret TBR. Yeah, I'm reading five books of the same genre for like a secret TBR thing. Um, I'm not gonna tell you what genre because then it would be a spoiler. But I've but I've already read one and I can say that I like I wanna talk about it so bad because it's so good, but I have to wait. I know I have to wait. Okay, but uh something else that I can tell you about is that I'm currently listening to an audiobook, Mythos by Stephen Fry, and I am quite enjoying it. I am a little bit um irked by the repetitiveness because I already know some of these legends and stories and stuff because of the Percy Jackson series and just like knowing stuff prior to like even reading the Percy Jackson series but it is it is fine I'm enjoying it that's it for my April April wrap up and March TBR hope you enjoyed my video if you like my video please leave a thumbs up comment like and subscribe all that good stuff all my social media links are down in the description below if you want to follow me go follow me it'd be so much fun that's it for this video and i hope to see you guys next time bye